Hey everybody, it's Teresa. Welcome to my channel. I'm going to make two necklaces and two pairs of earrings today. I guess I'm feeling sassy today or something. Because <laughs> I'm going to make two sets, two pairs of earrings and two necklaces. And I'm going to be using some of the beads and findings from three different curated bead boxes. Uh, I'll put a link in the description box below to each of the video unboxings I did for these particular boxes in case you want to watch it where I go over everything that came in the boxes. Uh, the curated bead box is $20 a month and that includes shipping. I think they only ship in the United States though. I have a coupon code. It's Teresa35 and I'll put it on the screen here and in the description box below along with a link to the page to sign up for the subscription if you're interested. The coupon code will save you 35% off your first box. So that would make your first box $13 I think. Uh, I've only got the stuff out here for one of my necklaces, but they're going to be really, really similar. I've just changed a little bit the way I've arranged the beads, but they're going to be just really similar. Uh, and here I've got the, from the Ponds and Lily Pads box, I've got the 10 millimeter drizzled deep turquoise glass beads. And I'm going to be using those in both necklaces. Uh, I've got the 10 millimeter pastel blue gemstone style glass beads and the 8 millimeter white semi matte glass beads and I'm going to be using all these same beads in both necklaces. I've got um, some bead caps from my stash. I've got some four, these little 4 millimeter flower spacer beads that that was in the Dusk in the Woods box. That's the most recent box that we got. I've got some findings in here. I've got uh, some of the jump rings that came in the box. I've got one 8mm jump ring from my stash. I've got a lobster clasp. I've got a couple of pieces of chain. Uh, I've got a little piece of chain I'm going to use as an extender. I've got one of these little matte white beads I'm going to put on a ball head pin and hang off my extender chain as a dangle. I've got two 2x2 two two crimp tubes and two wire guardians. And I'm going to be using, and I've got a bale in here, and I'm going to be using one of these uh, Hamza hand pendants that came in the treasure chest box. I've been wanting to use these, and I just never had never got around to it. And and then in my other neck, everything's I'm going to be using all the same stuff in my other necklace, except I'm going to be using this Hamza hand. It's sort of a, I think this is like a laser cut. Uh, Ham's a hand that I'm going to be using in my other necklace. And then for my earrings, I've got uh, these two of these drizzled deep turquoise beads, some of the spacer beads, some bead caps. Uh, I'm going to be using these smaller Ham's a hands. If I can get it out of there. <laughs> that came in the treasure chest box and I've got a couple of four millimeter jump rings in there a couple of ear wires and I've got a couple of pieces of 22 gauge German style wire silver German style wire I'm going to be using my soft flex beading wire in fine this is 21 strand uh, and it's the satin silver color I would have used the bead stringing box bead stringing wire that comes in the boxes but I'm all out of the silver I've used it all up uh, I've got my bead stoppers I'm going to be using my chain nose pliers, my tweezer pliers my round nose pliers, both pairs of my bent chain nose pliers, both pairs of my crepping pliers, both pairs of my cutters, my flat nose pliers and I've already used my memory wire cutters to cut my chain that's what I use to cut chain uh, I never do mention my beading mats that I use here. I always do put a link to them in the description box below, though, but I never do mention them. I really like them. They're bigger than most. They're 11 inches by 17 inches. No, 11 inches by 14 inches. And uh, I think that's right. 11 inches by... Yeah, 11 by 14 inches is what these are. And... Uh, I always do put a link in the description box below, but I never talk about them. But I had one of my 
sweet subscribers send me an email and she wanted to let everybody know that they're on sale on Amazon right now. Uh, they're $5.99 for three of them on Amazon right now. And I, I actually thought the link I had in the description box below was a link to Amazon, but it's not. It's a link to eBay. So I guess that's where I got these. But they're on sale uh, and they're cheaper if you buy them on Amazon right now. And I'll put a link in the description box below. I'll change it to the Amazon link because they're on sale. And she wanted to let everybody know that because she's such a sweet lady. <laughs> so, uh, and I'll put links to everything else I can find links for in the description box below. Everything that didn't come in the boxes. So, hold on. Let me get some of this out of the way and I'll start on my first necklace. So, I'll be back. Okay, I've got my beads out here to do my first necklace with, and I forgot to mention I'm going to use a couple of little silver 11 O's here to go under my bail when I string it on. I usually do that so that the bail is not rubbing directly against the wire, so I forgot about that. And I also forgot to mention the lady that told me about the bead, uh, bead mats being on sale. Her name is Karen, and she's just a really sweet lady. She wanted us to know that the uh, bead mats are on sale because... We need to take advantage of all the sales we can, don't we? So we can buy more beads. <laughs> That's my philosophy, anyway. So I'm gonna first thing I'm gonna do is put my little uh, pendant on my bail here. So I've got a jump ring. This is one of the jump rings that came in the box. Uh, I'm not. I mean, one of the boxes, I guess. But they are always the same findings, except uh, they alternate between gold and silver each month. So I'm just going to put my jump ring on my bail and put my pendant on there. Close my jump ring back. And I know you all probably know this, but just in case there's some brand new beaters, you always uh, open and close your jump rings by twisting them open. You never pull them apart. Because if you pull them apart, you won't be able to get them back in that nice round shape and it also uh, weakens the metal if you if you try to pull them apart instead of twisting them apart like I'm doing here uh, so I'm a little pendant ready there now I've got my bead string and wire and I just leave it attached to the spool if I know what my design is going to be because I kind of feel like I saved some wire doing that so uh, I'm going to start with a bead cap and one of these turquoise beads and another bead cap and then I'm going to do a spacer bead one of these matte white beads another spacer bead And then I'm going to do a bead cap. And then I'm going to do one of these pastel blue. I think that's what these were called. Pastel blue beads. And another bead cap. And I'm going to do one of these pastel blue beads without a bead cap. And then a bead cap. And then a pastel blue bead. And then another bead cap. And then a spacer bead. And then a matte white bead. A spacer bead. And then a bead cap. And a turquoise bead bead cap, turquoise bead without a bead cap, bead cap, turquoise bead, bead cap, spacer bead, matte white bead and now I'm down here to where my focal is going to be so I'm going to do two of these little silver seed beads 
and then I'm going to hang my little pendant on here. And those little seed beads are going to rest under my pendant there like that. Un under my bail, I mean. So now I'm going to string up the other half. It's going to be just exactly like this half. And when I get back, we'll crimp it and put the bindings on. So I'll be back. Okay, I've got my necklace all strung up now. Now I'm going to crimp it. So I'm going to take my crimp tube, put it on here. And my, one of my wire guardians. I'm going to go down the other channel of my wire guardian. Back into my crimp tube. And I'm going to try to keep my wires from being crossed because when we crimp we want both wires to land in their own little individual channels and if they're crossed they won't do that. <laughs> I'm going to take my crimping pliers and I'm going to go with that, you know, that part that has the tooth there. I'm going to lay the tooth on top. I'm going to squeeze. And that puts each wire in its own little channel. Now I'm going to go on this part up here. There's a half circle, three half circles on each side. I'm going to go on the middle one because that's the one by the one for the two by two crimp tubes. I'm going to lay my crimp in there. Squeeze. Give it a good tight squeeze. And now I'm going to tug. That's good. So now I'm going to take my cutters and cut off my extra wire. <clears throat> now I'm going to push all this down and cut my wire off of my spool. Now I'm going to take my other crimp tube and put it on this side. And my other wire guardian. I'm going to go down the other channel of my wire guardian. into my crimp tube. And I'm going to tuck this little wire guardian in. It seems like it needs to be tucked in a little bit. Now I'm going to pull my wire through. <clears throat> and I like to go through a bead if I can on this side because it gets my hands out of the way and it centers my wire guardian over my last bead. I want to go through there. I want to get through that bead cap too. <clears throat> I'm going to hold on to my wire guard and pull my wire through. <clears throat> I want to, I don't want there to be any slack in my piece, but I don't want it to be too tight either. Because if it's too tight, it won't drape well. So I usually coil it up like this when I'm, I'm going to crimp it, and that keeps it from being too tight. And then I'm going to try to keep my wires from being crossed. And I'm going to take my crimping pliers and go on that part with the tooth again. Lay the tooth on top. Squeeze. And now I'm going to go in the part with the half circles again. <clears throat> Give it a good tight squeeze. Now I'm going to tug. That's good. So now I'm going to take my cutters and cut off my extra wire. So 
that's what I've got now. So hold on, I'll get my findings and we'll put those on. So I'll be back. Okay, I'm going to put my findings on now. And I measured uh, this, all this here measures 10 and a quarter inches. And my pendant part here measures one and a quarter inches. So that's 11 and a half inches. And then each of my little pieces of chain I've got here are about four and a quarter inches each. So I'm going to take one of my jump rings. And open it up. Put my chain on. Put one side of my necklace on. Close my jump ring back. And I'm going to take another jump ring. <clears throat> Open it up. Put my other chain on. my other side of my necklace on close it back really well I'm going to take another jump ring open it up put the other end of one of my chains on and my lobster clasp Close my jump ring back really well. Now I've got an 8 millimeter jump ring <clears throat> that I'm going to use for my a lobster to clasp onto. I'm going to put it on this end of my chain. Just, I hope it'll go on there. It's a pretty thick jump ring in this chain is kind of tiny oh there we go now I've got a little piece of extender chain it's about two inches I'll put that on there close my jump ring back and another thing when you close your jump rings back it's helpful if you go past and then come back to where it meets it's easier to get it to meet if you do that Okay, so that's what I've got so far. And now I'm going to make a little dangle to go on my extender chain. So I've got a ball head pin and one of my white beads. And I'm going to take my tweezer. Oh, I forgot to, I think I forgot to mention my little New Orleans shot glass. I can't remember if I mentioned him or not. That's what I put my wires in when I cut them off. I can't remember if I, meant, if I introduced him or not. Now I'm going to go to the tip of my pliers. Bend the wire over at a 90 degree angle. Take my round nose pliers and put them in the crook of the bend. Round nose pliers facing me. Bend the wire back until it hits the bead. Rotate the pliers till they're facing the table. Take this part under here until it hits the bottom of the tool. Kink the wire back until the loop is centered over the bead. I take my bent chain nose pliers and hold on to my loop. Bring my wire down a little bit. I'll take my other pair of bent chain nose pliers and start to wrap. Just going to wrap till there's no more room to wrap. Now I'm going to take my cutters and cut off my extra wire. And I use a different pair of cutters for head pins and eye pins and craft wire than I do for bead stringing wire. Now I'm going to take these crimping pliers and I'm going to go in that part there at the end that has the half circles on each side. And I'm going to tuck in the little burrs where I cut off the wire. 
course you can do this with pliers I just find it works well for me to do it with those scrimping pliers now I'm going to take my flat nose pliers and open the end of my extender chain and thread on a little dangle close my extender chain back so there's my first necklace all done so hold on I'll get a little, I'm gonna make a little pair of earrings to go with it so I'll be back okay I'm gonna make a little earring now to go with my necklace so I've got a piece of 22 gauge German style wire here. This is about a three and a half inch piece of wire. I'm going to go down not hardly an inch and a half. Bend the wire over at a 90 degree angle. Around those pliers and put them in the crook of the bend. Around those pliers facing me. Bend the wire back until it hits the tool. Rotate the pliers till they're facing the table. Take the short piece of wire up and under here until it hits the bottom of the tool. Kink the wire back until the loop is centered over the wire. And that usually stands them a little piece of wire straight up there. And I take my bent chain those pliers and hold on to my loop. Bring this wire down. Bend the short piece of wire around the long piece of wire about three times. I'm going to take my cutters, cut off my extra wire, now I'm going to take one of my spacer beads, a bead cap, one of my turquoise beads, bead cap, and one of my spacer beads. And I'm going to take my pliers. I'm going to go to the very tip of the pliers. Bend the wire over at a 90 degree angle. Round those pliers in the crook of the bend. Bend the wire back until it hits the beads. Rotate the pliers till they're facing the table. Take this part under it until it hits the bottom of the tool. Kink the wire back until the loop is centered over the beads. Take my bent chain those pliers and hold on to my loop. Bring this wire down. Take my other pair of bent chain those pliers. Start to wrap. Make sure to get that first wrap in under the bottom of the loop and not over the top of the bottom of the loop. Just wrap till there's no more room to wrap. I'm going to take my cutters, cut off my extra wire, I'm going to take my crimping pliers and tuck in my little burrs, now I'm going to take my and got a little four millimeter jump ring here. I'm going to open my jump ring. Put on my little charm. Thread it onto my little link I've made here. Close my jump ring back. I'm going to take my ear wire. Open it up just like we do a jump ring, twist it open. And I'm going to thread this on here and I'm going to make sure to thread the right, thread it so it'll hang the right way because these are not double sided, they're different on the back. So I'm going to hang that on there, close my ear wire back. There's my little earring. So I'm going to make the other one off camera 
and then I'm going to go ahead and make my other necklace off camera too and my other pair of earrings because it's exactly the same procedure that I used to make this necklace and earrings. I've just rearranged the beads a little bit and I'm using a different pendant but it's just exactly the same uh, uh, process. So when I get the necklace, uh, the second necklace and earring strung up, I'll come back and show it to you and then I'll get them all out together and show them to you all together. So hold on, I'll be back. Okay, here's my second necklace and pair of earrings and it's just like the other except uh, we're here where I did the turquoise beads. I've changed it. I've just rearranged it. I put the pastel blue ones and then the other necklace I had the pastel blue ones here and I put the turquoise ones here and then in the other necklace I had the turquoise ones here and I put the pastel blue ones here. But it's just exactly the same other than that and I've got my little uh, laser cut pendant on it here and then for the earrings I just did two of the laser cut uh, hands, Hamza hands, and two of the pastel blue uh, beads with the spacer beads and the bead caps just like I did the other earrings. So this is that one. So hold on, I'll see if I can get them all together in one picture and I'll be back. Okay, there's both of my necklace and earrings sets made with some of the beads and findings from three different curated bead boxes. I think I said in the last video I enjoy going back into older boxes and uh, maybe combining them together and playing around with them. It's a lot of fun to do that. Uh, like I said, if you're not subscribed to the Curated Bead Box and you decide you want to be, that coupon code will save you 35% off your first box if you sign up. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. As always, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate those of you who have subscribed to my channel and watched my videos and liked and commented on my videos. I have a website where I sell my jewelry. I also sell gift cards and some extra beads and findings that I have. It's Teresa's Handmade Jewelry and I'll put a link to it in the description box below in case you're interested, along with a link to my Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and my email. If you haven't, I'd really love it if you'd subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified when I upload a new video. So until next time, I hope you all have a great day. Take care.